suffering, death, and all-out war is a reality our next guest knows too well. But in the face of all these things, he remains dedicated to helping the helpless. I sat down with the vicar of Baghdad, Andrew White, and spoke to him about the Middle East, Syria, and bringing solutions to a devastated region. Cannon, you reached a breaking point in your country of Iraq, and you called for the ousting of Saddam Hussein. You called for his death. Is there a breaking point in Syria, even for you as a person of the clergy? The really difficult thing is, with Syria at the moment, who are, de who are we dealing with? The so-called rebels that we're called to support are on the whole extreme terrorists. Do you actually have the pen that signed Saddam Hussein's death warrant? You do. Why do you have that? Because it's mine. The Prime Minister said, you've got the best pen in Iraq. Can I use it? That is the kind of relationship this clergyman has created with power in a war-torn region. His speech is marked by a disability. A 10-year battle with multiple sclerosis has not stopped the vicar from going into dangerous places. This is the incredible journey you are on as a cleric in this world of peacemaking. And this is a war about religion that's going on that's tearing your Middle East apart. I want to know what people of the book have to bring into this. We have to bring the love of Christ, the peace of Christ, and the loving of our enemy. And when it comes to President Assad in Syria, the vicar has an interesting relationship. He used to work with President Assad. The vicar was a doctor, anesthetizing patients, while President Assad was an eye surgeon working on their healing. What is going on is there is a real fear about the issue of loss and moving forward. And so much terrorism is to do with those who feel they have lost. They have lost their jobs, their positions, their prosperity. Ultimately, they have lost power. But you yourself have written that many of these adversaries see their loss in spiritual terms. So you have Muslims fighting against Muslims, you have a civil yes. war against Muslims. Can that religion of peace, that's now become a religion of war, be de-escalated? You've Is got to work on that. We have seen how that can happen when you get people together when you get them to listen to each other's story and you get them to realize that they are both suffering the same. So jihad can be tamed, can it? We have seen that it can, but it is very hard and it is not how most governments understand it needs to be done. It is not by dropping bombs on people. It is by bringing them round a table to engage with each other. And to strengthen the care for those in the war-torn region he serves, the vicar builds relationships with Canadian churches and government. He boasts of positive and strong relationships here and abroad to help care for those most in need. Before you came here, you were with Canada's foreign minister. You are with our ambassador of religious freedom. What are you asking Canada to do in peace? And I'll be honest with you about Canada. Canada has become our biggest partner for peace in Iraq. They are with us. Their Consular General in Iraq is regularly in our church. The Foreign Minister has himself been to our church in Baghdad. They have seen what we do. They help us. They give us money to make peace. And when I went to see them the other day, 
I said, I do not want anything from you. I'm coming to talk about our work together. I'm not coming to ask anything from you. So Canada's foreign aid is going to flow out of St. George's Anglican in Baghdad? Well, not its foreign aid. It's work for engagement with the other. So it's very much a political side of the work. It's not the work of the church or the relief work we do or even the clinic this is our real reconciliation work that interview was shot upstairs in our office we um, caught the vicar when he was back coming back from ottawa and we're going to give you some more of that but first we want to hear your view our question is this should the west that's us give up trying to fix the Middle East, Sheldon Neal. Okay, first, Lorna, if you're trying to see how, if I have a solution to fix in the Middle East, that's gonna mean a huge Christmas bonus, like huge, <laughs> okay. huge, huge, huge. All right. but I, I, and the Nobel Peace Prize. I, that's yeah, correct. Right. No, no but, but okay. I'll say this, I think the answer to that possibly is in being our brother's keeper. I think that, you know, we should never give up on helping anyone we see in need. However, we should say, you know what, is it our responsibility to fix something? That may go in a little bit too far. So I think there's a healthy balance between helping and trying to change a model we may need to know more about. Okay, well, context is two-way television, and that only works when we hear from you. So connect with us and make your voice heard. Again, your feedback will help drive this conversation forward. We'll also have more with the Vicar of Baghdad, Andrew White, coming up.